Peter? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just making sure. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Daryl, <clears throat> uh, for your explanation. I, I just have a couple of points. One, um, I couldn't agree with you more about the uh, vernacular, verbiage, uh, vocabulary, whatever you want to call it, in terms of um, getting your point across. <clears throat> and I think the more descriptive that can be, the more meaningful it can be uh, to players, I think is, um, is extremely important when it comes to, t to the uh, teaching and learning. The, the, the one thing I will say, though, is I think it can vary. I think that uh, what what is meaningful for one player may or may not be meaningful for another player. And I think as a, you know, the challenge <clears throat> for a coach, although you, you certainly want consistency, the challenge in coaching is making sure that uh, that information that you're giving to individual players is meaningful for those individual players. They all learn different. They all process information different. So I think that there is some, some uh, again, keeping the consistency in mind. I think there is some, uh, you know, I'd mentioned this maybe before you got on the call. There is some gray area there that needs to be addressed from time to time um, with the players. Um, but I have a question for you. Uh, you had mentioned earlier in your discussion about even at the high, I, and I may be quoting you wrong, but uh, even at the highest level, uh, we have players who are unable to make reads for a, uh, for a myriad of reasons. Maybe you could expand on some of those, not the whole myriad, but some, some of those reasons that you feel that um, players, even at the highest level, are unable, you know, in your opinion, to make those reads. I, I think that they make the reads. They don't act on the reads. And the reason they may not act on the reads, and the longer they go not acting on the reads, the less likely they're going to make those reads as consistently as they once was. And Agreed. the reasons are because of the stakes in which they're playing, the where they are in the lineup, uh, their feeling of where how much mistake they can actually make. At the highest level of women's hockey, you're playing a tournament. And one one mistake at the wrong time could cost you a medal or a chance to play. Like the stakes are incredibly high, which cannot be discounted as part of you know the highest level and the challenges that go on there and why some of these things, like a player is going to be abnormally, in my mind, miss a read. They're going to miss an obvious read to put themselves in a specific spot. They do so because of the stakes and all of those, where they're at, what they're trying to do, all the context of the game. They're just going to perhaps err on the side of caution. So there might be only a small percentage of players, the highest level, who are making a decision on the read of where they should be on the certain sides of the puck at a given time. They're actually processing, you know, maybe I should be here, maybe I should be mm -hmm. there, maybe I should be here. Oftentimes, they're going to position themselves perhaps more on the defensive side. And then if, if there's a 100% chance, then they're going to jump or it's an 80% chance, then they're going to get, they're going to activate. So it's not to discount it. I'm just say, I'm saying that if you were to watch, you know, watch the gold medal game, for example, and you just evaluated every puck touch and the players around the puck touch and their support, and where they moved, and when they moved, and when they saw the read. How many of them, and at different times of the game, it's a, it's a sliding scale, right? It moves as to what their tolerance for risk is, what the score of the game is, and all those considerations, they're all factors. That's at the highest level. But when you're coaching, we don't, nobody, like we have six defensemen playing, eight defensemen that play, <coughs> at the highest, highest level that we have. Well, the rest of us can be in situations in which they are learning these sorts of things because they don't have the same level of consideration. They're only going to play, you know, uh, at a level that, you know, gets to a point where there's maybe three or four games all year that <coughs> they have these considerations. The rest of the time, they can really be learning what these things are and not be at the same level of risk that we're promoting at the highest highest level where the stakes are so high if that makes any sense yeah that makes sense i i, I think you know that kind of 
happens across hockey. I mean, I, 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 you know, you can even see that in the NHL as well. That, you know, well, you know what? Yeah, special. yeah. I mean, guys. I mean, there it's costing them money, right? I mean, uh, you get the fourth line guy who makes a mistake, um, turns the puck over at the offensive blue line. He's probably not going to see the ice again. So I, I you know, so I, I can certainly agree with that. That and especially, you know, the the risk and reward really changes depending on where you are in the lineup, who you're playing with, all of that sort all of, of stuff that. at every level. Yeah, well, definitely. So yeah. my so my question is, do we all coach now on that standard? Because that's what we're hearing. Is that because we often the the way the vernacular comes, it comes from often the top down. Yeah. Like we're hearing every night you're gonna hear a you know you could you could hear 20 different uh you know press conferences about the game and they're going to talk about these things and different types of words that are happening that are happening at the highest level and right. now i'm a peewee coach and i start using that vernacular with my peewee team i don't know if it's the same yeah i'm, I'm going to uh, argue it's not yeah and i, I, I think it, it, it's different but and we don't educate our people enough about what's different about it which is the whole content. I hope that makes sense, Peter, but that's... Yeah, no, no, I, I, I get it. And for me, the issue is at the developmental level. So, you know, Adam Novice Pee Wee is, it's about making the right play. It's not yes. whether the kid's on the third line or not. It's about making the right play. And, yes. and, and that's the only way that they're going to get. Now, the, the issue is the right play varies from coach to coach. So, Correct. you know, and, and that it, to me is where we want to make some some progress. And why do you have, you know, maybe you're, you know, if you've got a, a team of nine forwards and your eighth, ninth guy, you're telling them to dump the puck in and change when there's a chance to carry the puck into the offensive zone. And to me, that's wrong. I, I think that that's a mistake that, you know, it, and again, so some of the factors I don't think should come into play at the developmental level in particular you know, based on score or ability level or all those things. It's it's about yeah, doing the right thing. I I agree. And and sometimes the right thing for and this is where I think you're right. And this is where it becomes difficulty difficult and why we need to have discussion because it's not really clear cut. It's not it's yeah. there's a lot of factors because Agreed. the right play for the ninth forward on the team is not the same play as the right play for the first forward on the team because they process the game differently and you have different developmental objectives. <clears throat> the right play for the ninth forward might be just to get them to skate three steps with the puck to make a decision. The right play for the first forward might be to find a two-on-one somewhere and work inside the two-on-one. So it's very different, and, and, and that's a sliding scale, which is why... You know, it's very difficult to impose these like what's right and what's wrong yeah. at the lower levels because there's so many factors away into it. What I want to get to as part of that discussion to maybe simplify it is these three levels of where yeah. where you are in relationship to the puck. To the puck are you yeah. above the puck? Are you even with the puck? Are you behind the puck? And if so, why so? Why were you there? What were you trying to do? And to me, and this goes back to my own philosophy, and I'm ramming down everyone's throat all the time, which is <laughs> I would love to see more discussion-based coaching at the minor hockey level. Agreed. And asking of what's going on rather than a telling of what's going on. Or I'm uncomfortable with the risk as the coach because of what I saw. But maybe for that player... Like, let's talk it through. I think that's such an important thing that we just don't do. As a coach, you're always imposing your philosophy and your your uh, admire at your risk levels and all that stuff. Should you? Should you be? I don't know that we should. Maybe it's better to get it from the kids, and then you know you can coach the results. So you know, hey, you know you're you go out to the point. Uh, the puck goes D to D. You're the weak side or the strong side forward. Go D to D. Puck, you go out to your point. Guy goes D to D. That guy shoots it off the pass. It hits a shin pad to, to, the, to, that, to that forward. This guy just sprints out of the zone because he's like, turn over. I'm gone. This guy gets it. He tries to go off the wall, kind of mishandles it. 
they keep the puck in. Yeah. And now I got a forward out in the neutral zone who is effectively, by the letter of the law, cheating for offense. <laughs> but is he cheating for offense? Really? He made a read. That was a block shot. His guy was getting to the puck first. He sprints out of the zone. And the fact that the kid that got the puck wasn't able to make that play, do we hang it on the kid that left early? We do. Should we? Yeah. I'd rather say, what did you see? Well, Daryl, I saw the I, I saw the puck get blocked. I knew our guy was getting there first. I'm thinking this is a breakaway. I had to, I felt like I had to go. Yeah, I know, but they kept the puck in. Yeah, I know, but our guy got there first. Like that's not fair, maybe, to hang it on. And I think we get caught in these situations where, you know, that this kid's making a read. He was on the defensive side of the puck. He read the circumstance. Should we be encouraging the read? That was, in my mind, that's the right read. It's a bad yeah. result. Now, maybe, maybe it's the last minute of the game. And now he's trying to get an empty netter. And you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. I understand that. And that is the right read. No question. But at this time, Wrong maybe, time. maybe we don't need that. We just want to make sure it gets out and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now you're coaching. You're not saying the kid comes back to the bench and you're like, hey, we're seriously, we're we're under a minute to go and you're going to cheat for offense for an empty netter. Like, that's pretty selfish. That's one way to do it. Or the other way to do it is like, I love that read. I think that was totally right. Our guy was getting there first. I don't know about last minute of play. Like maybe yeah. we should, maybe we should win. The, but I love that read. So that's two different approaches. And you're, I, I think that there's a way to get your message across sometimes. Not what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah. And, I, and in, in the second way, I think you're encouraging more reads, which is we're trying to promote hockey sense. We're trying to teach hockey sense. But sometimes we are, we are actively, even though it's not purposefully, but we are actively eliminating reads from kids and saying, yeah, that's not a read. That's a hard and fast. That's a hard and fast. That's a hard yeah. and fast. Like, okay, well, which one's a read? Which one? You know what? I can't figure out which one's a read and which is not. So I'm just going to play. I know he wants me here. So that's it. I think there's too much of that. That's why I raised raise the question. So yeah. it's All great right. stuff. I love this part of the discussion because I, this is really the heart of what I want to get to is like this stuff. It's less about right or wrong. Should she have gone? Should she not have gone? It's she did. There's a read there. What do we do inside of that? That's where I want to go. So I, I thanks for tap tap dancing all over that because that's exactly what I was I was hoping for. Thanks. Sammy might be up next or Tim. Tim, go ahead, Tim. Sure. Um so much to say, so little time. <laughs> I don't know. These guys typically go for three hours, so I don't know. Yeah. No, uh, um, really lots of things, but like, I agree 100% with your article, Daryl, 100%. And with your basic uh, 